Hey, it's Jordan. Delighted to be joined by Amory Desjardin. Uh, you are the uh, founder of Down Ballot Progressives, uh, Down Ballot Progress, uh, which is a really interesting new group uh, that is focused on helping elect more progressives down ballot uh, all the way down to the local state legislature, uh, which I think is really important. Uh, obviously, when people, uh, when our revolution started and when Bernie kind of launched the call, uh, for more people to get involved, he talked about from the ground up, and a lot of change uh, can happen at, at your local level. Uh, so I wanted to start. What kind of what brought this idea to create uh, down ballot progress, and what's kind of the structure and mechanism to try and uh, get more progressives uh, elected on the local level? Yeah, you know, I, I've now been in politics now for five to six years working on campaign to campaign. Um, and I have worked on campaigns from state rep to president. And uh, I've seen a lot of good campaigns and I've seen bad campaigns as well. Um, the most, uh, uh, the, the what has been one of the consistent things across all of those, though, is within Democratic primaries, um, especially in state rep and state Senate level, uh, you know, those volunteer shifts, they work. Uh, they work. And um, and so it's important that, you know, we provide those volunteer pace that we need to get more progressives elected um, so that they can get their message out there. And that's been proven to be uh, the number one or number two thing that, that candidates rank as most difficult um, uh, to winning these campaigns. Uh, and so, you know, I was kind of a little bit tired of trying to build a volunteer base from scratch every single time. Uh, and so I um, thought we needed uh, more people focused on state legislature specifically. So that's what led to down ballot. And, you know, to me, uh, something I've seen when I'm in the field on the congressional and Senate level is when uh, just normal people like teachers, uh, social workers, whatever, decide to run, uh, they are up against a lot of dirty tricks and corruption. I remember uh, Anthony um, Clark in, in Illinois was running for Congress. I mean, the incumbents trying to get their signatures thrown out of court uh, down in Florida uh, in 2016, Tim Canova's campaign. I mean, taking down their lawn signs. I mean, everything you could think of from corporate establishment candidates uh, basically trying to, you know, uh, I guess legally, but, you know, arguably screw uh, upstart grassroots candidates. And that kind of stuff happens on the local level because most people running are not career politicians. So uh, what is your group's um, kind of plan for, frankly, uh, yes, door knocking and volunteering, but local city to city uh, locality, you're up against an old boys club and a lot of these local um, local races, uh, you're up against uh, really entrenched old boy politics. First off, when we run against these candidates and they pull dirty tricks like that, that means they're scared, first off. Uh, but so so let's keep at it. Keep running for these state legislature uh, seats. Um, what we're trying to do besides provide a volunteer base is also establish an infrastructure uh, for these progressive candidates to work with. Uh, and one of the things that we'll be doing is providing trainings for staffers uh, so that they know how to run these races on the, the state legislature level. Because what you do on the state legislature level for campaigns is different what you do than what you do on um, on uh, federal races. Uh, you know, the communication strategy is completely different and the expectations of earned versus paid media need to be set uh, for any staffers. And so we're hoping by doing so, we can create uh, a, a infrastructure that keeps staffers focused on these state legislature levels and maybe gets them to uh, work on multiple races because they're so trained up and well. Um, and, and thus, last thing, important for all of these people, as we're seeing right now, um, that work on these races, getting paid what you deserve. Um, so, uh, you know, that's uh, something different that we think we'll provide. And let me ask you, because I think a lot of progressives out there, frankly, are um, dejected, you know, two, right. two Bernie campaigns uh, this last time. It seemed for a hot minute he could he could win the nomination. Uh, they see Biden, frankly, I mean, abandoning most of the very few promises he made. And they might not be realizing uh, or it might not sink in. OK, yeah, 
disappointment on the national end right now, but you could actually get a lot of change on the local level. What would be your message to why people should focus, uh, not take their eye off national politics, but why they should focus on uh, local legislatures, you know, maybe get involved volunteering, uh, what have you on, on the local level? Yeah, I mean, I, I have two messages for those folks. I, I've certainly felt the disappointment as well. Um, but, you know, let's keep in mind that the long game at play here. You remember, you know, where issues like Black Lives Matter or a $15 minimum wage or Medicare for all stood six years ago. They were in the absolute tank in polling wise. Uh, but, you know, advocates got their message together and they uh, they fought back. Um, and so I, I'm confident that we can continue to fight back. But another thing that down ballot progress is providing is by electing these candidates to state legislatures, we're building a natural bench for more candidates, uh, electable candidates uh, for for uh, federal office as well. Uh, you know, this being a state representative and a state senator in, in all these states gives you a lot of name recognition off the bat to running a race for Congress, whether or not it's for a House of Representatives or a Senate. So, um, you know, stay in the fight. Think about everything that we've been uh, we've, uh, done so far um, and, uh, you know, know that we're playing more groundwork so that we can be absolutely dominant in the next five to 10 years. And let me ask you, because you've ran a bunch of local campaigns, been involved with a bunch of local campaigns, you know, on the national end, we have seen kind of that generational divide where uh, even in the Democratic primary this time, I mean, even all, you know, Medicare for all polled exceptionally well, every state uh, between Bernie, Biden, the rest of them, uh, Medicare for all polled incredibly well, including in Mississippi and other southern states. Uh, but we were told and the brainwashing from the corporate media, oh, uh, well, you know, uh, you got to be pragmatic and, you know, Midwest voters don't want these populist things. On the local level, have you seen uh, kind of, vo uh, you know, those traditional older voters, uh, even some possibly right wing voters are open issue by issue to the progressive message on healthcare, education, climate. Uh, what have you seen on the local level in terms of kind of that actual reality that no, the policies are popular across the board? Yeah, I, you know, a lot of what you said just spoke to me. Um, you're seeing people move left uh, in these in, at the local level. Um, and uh, it's, uh, you know, refreshing to see. Um, but, you know, what you also just reminded me of is that, yeah, people still are kind of ingrained in like their I'm moderate or I am uh, right or left. Right. Uh, but they 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 um, like these issues when you present to them one on one. So the messaging side of things, especially yeah, the whole communication side of things, especially going campaign by campaign and knowing what works for your base is important. So training these staffers is going to go a long way. Uh, to helping make sure that they identify their message that they need to win. Mm -hmm. And do you see uh, as possibly a benefit, uh, frankly, we have an eviction time bomb coming up, uh, yeah. the moratorium ends at the end of the week. I don't mean that's, uh, excuse me, at the end of the month. I don't mean that's a good thing, but honestly, I think you're going to have a lot more economically desperate people uh, come summer, fall, uh, states are already pulling away unemployment uh, prematurely in my view. Uh, so do you see this economic moment where we have the same, you know, CNBC messaging that the economy is doing great again and bouncing back, but on the ground in reality, people are really struggling. Do you see that as an opportunity for that, uh, you know, local progressive candidates to reach more people? Yeah, you know, I think our message is going to win in times of economic strength and economic uh, disparity or yeah, in, in times of economic weakness as well. Um, and, and it just reminds me that, you know, we need to have our message ready at all times and pushing forward organizations like this and establishing that infrastructure so that we're ready for moments like this. It's terrible that people are about to get um, absolute, uh, that a ton of people are about to be evicted. It's terrible that we're going back to normal and people are going to, uh, you know, return to minimum wage uh, jobs uh, where they can't afford to make ends meet without working two or three jobs at a time. Um, so, you know, having our message together, uh, having uh, organizations like this where we can wrap, where we can unite progressives behind uh, and, and put our message out there 
um, regardless of what what times we live in, uh, is going to be important uh, because we got to be ready for those times to take advantage of them. And uh, lastly, down ballot uh, progress lists as long term goals uh, nullifying the Electoral College, uh, add a, adding a voting rights amendment to the Constitution, ratifying the Equal Rights Amendment. Uh, these are some you know heavy duty things. Uh, what are the mechanisms for that? Is that working with other groups to do that? Uh, how do you see in terms of particularly the Electoral College? Yeah. Well, it, it, so there's a, there's a couple of things, right? You know, um, the the what you know we could focus on what's right now, but the instruments that elected Trump or his version of the GOP that was even elected before him, they're still in play, and we have to get our message out there and advocate for these things, even if they happen 30, 40, 50 years from now. But state legislators play a key role in those. Uh, they have to ratify. Uh, they have to ratify uh, all these amendments, no matter how they come about. Um, and so it's important that we go out there and advocate for them, so that number one, we can make it the norm for all uh, state legislature candidates to support this now and going forward, uh, and elect those state legislature candidates that we're putting in place now to the uh, House and, and Senate eventually so that we can get the votes up there necessary as well. Um, the National Popular Vote Interstate Compact, which aims to nullify the Electoral College, though, is actually pretty close in sight. If you look at the, the states left that need to pass it for it to go into effect, optimistically, admittedly, there's a path in the next three years. I kind of doubt it, but the point is that that path and we can start getting closer and closer can be in the next eight to 12 as well. And relative to the whole policy process, that's pretty close. So we should be putting a lot of effort and time in there uh, in these general elections as well. You know, we can be an organization that not only primaries uh, Democrats who aren't doing enough for working families, but uh, can also help. I would say the left in general at that point, because that's a popular issue, regardless of where you stand within the Democratic Party um, or outside the, uh, or outside of it. Absolutely. And uh, where can people find out more about down ballot? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for asking. You know, we're at downballotprogress.com um, and there you can sign up to volunteer or donate. You know, obviously, I'm going to plug the donations at this point. Anything. No, no donation is too small. Uh, and it takes a lot to keep the overhead for the, this, this organization going. But our bread and butter will be volunteering. We think if we can build that volunteer base, that can get to the point of pumping out 100 or, or hundreds of volunteer shifts a week, which we know is not easy. Uh, we really bring a seat to the uh, table within the state legislatures. So thank you. Absolutely. Thanks for joining me. We'll uh, keep in contact. Thanks, Jordan. Have a good one.